Okay, guys, uh, camera is rolling again. It's happening. Okay, buddy. Uh, what is this podcast called? Uh, it's called Two Past, Two Curious. And why is it called that, buddy? Because uh, there are two buddies. Yeah. Who uh, talk about past. Wow. And who are very curious about past. Yeah. And about history in general. Yeah. And yeah, that's why Two Past, Two Curious. It's two Past, Two play. Curious. It's also a word play. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the first episode of uh, Two Past, Two Curious or... Uh, um, uh, making history with buddies as yeah. it is. <laughs> this no. podcast repeats itself. Like yeah. Once. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, this podcast is uh, not like uh, just us talking about our personal lives and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little different. Yeah. Uh, because every time uh, me and buddy meet, yeah. uh, we like to discuss trivia. Yeah. yeah That's buddy. true. I'm feeling like, like it's our normal conversation, but like with a mic and a camera. Yeah. And with audience who feels like they're hanging out with us. Yeah. Yeah, but, but not really. Yeah. Not really. Great buddy. So today's topic is what? Today we have, we have we've chosen something that is topical, which is being talked about all over the world. Yeah. Uh, is it every love? single <laughs> every single message or news item is about uh, coronavirus. Or, yeah. And then that is when like uh, like you and I discussed like we want to talk about history and like things from the past, which are to do with pandemics and like big outbreak of diseases and like some scientific facts, some historical yeah. impacts, etc. etc. Yeah. Et so today's episode is about outbreaks and epidemics or like pandemics yeah. throughout history. All right, let's begin. What's your uh, first insanely interesting fact? Buddy, for before I even get into facts, Biswa, the buddy, buddy Biswa, yes, <laughs> is uh, just the sheer number of people who have died over the course of human history because of plagues. Like every plague or like every disease or pandemic, I was reading about the figures were just insane. Like one third of population has just died. Yeah, half of continents have just died, and you know in today's world, when like one person dies, like SARS or Ebola, comparatively they are nothing. Yeah, you know, and that's why I want to start with this quote I read. I don't know who said it, but viruses used to spread at the speed of a steamboat. Now they can spread at the speed of a jet. Yeah. So that's the difference now because earlier, yeah. like, if there's a plague in Europe, it'll take ages to come to India. Yeah. But now it it spreads like because every Indian case that we are reading right now, the person has either been to Italy yeah. or to Dubai, etc. And also now we are more densely populated cities and all that. But the other the other side is that now we also have better healthcare and better vaccination. Yeah. So that I don't know if uh, our cities are more densely populated mm-hmm. because uh, throughout history people have lived in densely populated areas. Mm-hmm. But healthcare is definitely yeah. the uh, it has improved for yeah. sure, yeah. and uh, it has improved uh, in the sense that now this outbreak just came what three months ago. And already vaccine trials have started. Yeah. As of now, vaccine trials have started. People did not know vaccines existed yeah. for a long, long, long time. Yeah. I was reading about this. There was a, a, before vaccination, is something called variolation. Mm. I think I'll just check. It's mm. called variolation or something. So you know what that is? It's insane. Yeah. Variolation, right? This will keep happening in the podcast yeah, because yeah. we That's don't okay. claim to be experts on anything. We're not. We don't just, know anything. We're yeah. uh, we're, just we're just fans. Of figure, fans of history. We're yeah. fans of trivia. Yeah. So variolation was uh, uh, so just for somebody who doesn't know anything about uh, vaccines or whatever, is that how vaccination works? Is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, mm. right? So uh, I'll give you some. Uh, um, Thakela bacteria hmm. and uh, your immune system will be like, and hmm. then you can get it. Then the best bacteria will be like, so we can get it. That's what it is. Basically, vaccination that. for dummies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. But uh, what used to happen is uh, people had figured out that some diseases you get once, then you don't get twice. Hmm. They didn't know how, hmm. but they knew that this happened. Hmm. So in China, what they used to do is um, say you have uh, smallpox. Hmm. Uh, which is a disease that does not exist anymore, which is yeah. insane. Yeah. It does not yeah. exist, yeah. except in some three labs. Yeah. Uh, so they would take uh, your skin or 
कुछ तो होता है ओ डी जीज का लाइक चिकन पॉक्स जैसा होता है दे टेक इट दे ड्राइड आउट एंड देन दे ग्राइंड इट एंड देन ब्लो इट इन टूर नोज most likely you will get a mild disease and you will be immune but sometimes people used to get full disease also oh. so that has existed long before this edward jenner came up with smallpox vaccine types wow. for ages and then it went from china to somewhere and then it came to turkey and then came, came to constantinople and then it came to europe and then edward jenner came to like before edward jenner this has existed edward jenner is not uh, kyle jenner's uh, brother just say okay <laughs> yeah the today's generation only knows one family yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, do you want to uh, start with? I just I just had a list of like biggest plagues or sure. like biggest epidemics of all time. Yeah, and I think the first one has to be the Great Plague of London, uh, which, as we all know, I, I think you and I bonded over this a uh, few years back in yeah. a Lucknow hotel room where we talked about bubonic plague yeah. of fourteenth century, where uh, you know almost seventy five to two hundred million people died, and then. Uh, came back to london in 1665 and it killed 20% of london's population imagine i mean these are just figures on like paper or whatever but imagine one out of five people from yeah. a city are dead yeah basically <laughs> <laughs> there were like mass graves 100000 people dead cats are being killed dogs are being killed it's insane to even think about it imagine yeah one fifth <sighs> One fifth, as in, if you had a group of five, yeah. then you're a group of four. Yeah, and that's true of every group of five yeah. at that point. Yeah, that's insane. It's like this left the group. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? He died of plague. But uh, okay, now that we are talking about the plague, I want to talk about some of the things of how uh, pandemics and uh, have affected history. Okay? Yeah, and I was reading about. like some beautiful or like not beautiful necessarily but different implications of these outbreaks okay and we let's just focus on this plague right now plague the bubonic plague of uh, 14th century the middle ages and the london plague etc and uh, how it affected human history in more ways than one apart from just casualties apart from just people dying there are so many different ways in which a human society gets affected for example This was the first time in human history, in Europe at least, where people started questioning man's relationship with God, which is not an aspect you generally associate pandemic yeah. in today's world at least. Yeah. Uh. So people were like, "How are we suffering? Why are we dying? And why are children suffering?" And that was the first time people started questioning, uh, this human relationship with God. Like, does God exist? And if He does, why is He doing this to us? Which is a very like interesting aspect to look at. The other thing was how, uh, because of plague, uh, it gave an advancement to modern state or the definition of modern state. Because what happened was, whenever there's an outbreak of a disease, uh, a society needs strong leadership or strong army or strong decision makers and councils and like, you know, uh, like अरे तुम लोग सभी कटाव जाओ ऐसे करो यहाँ जाओ ये करो I love how that's your idea of strong leaders. Like सभी कटाव जाओ. So basically, stronger authority. Yeah. and that's when that was one of the uh, results of plague when people were like okay we gave rise to modern states modern yeah. modern government and all that the third was the end of serfdom uh like we know how europe but especially in uk there was this hierarchy of like serfs and then like dukes and whatever that entire uh, human hierarchy and because of plague like the general standard of living of people increased yeah after the plague and that is when it also led towards abolition of serfdom or like in some way also contributed to industrial revolution mm. and so i i was i was just fascinated by all this yeah also when i was talking about relationship with god there are negative aspects to it to it also where people were like uh like it's it's very similar to how now we get fake whatsapp forwards whenever yeah. something comes and then it gave a rise to you know religious pogroms against jews etc like against witchcraft and like ye log ki wajah se ho raha hai inko maar dete hain all that yeah. that also happened that even happens now now yeah correct it even happens now there's one thing uh, basically when people used to live in the jungles and all not exactly in jungles but wherever and they didn't have like settled societies before agriculture 
uh diseases did not spread like this because they were not in communication with each other right once they came to big cities the diseases could spread like wildfire and they would kill people yeah yeah there was one f- fun fact that I, i remember you and i discussed was how uh, because of the european plague uh, they had a rule in venice that all the ships that used to come from asia yeah. particularly and they had a rule that you had you have to be away from the city and they decided on 40 days as as one benchmark it was i think for religious reason there was no scientific logic as such but they wanted people to not enter the city and be at a certain place for 40 days yeah and that gave uh, rise to the word quarantine yeah right and because was, uh, 40 in uh, yeah. italian or something is yeah. warrant and yeah, something yeah. yeah right so that was the earliest possible yeah. uh, early, one of the earliest examples also of quarantine which till date is one of the first things that happens when whenever a virus spreads but just the sheer scale of how many people plague killed and i was reading somewhere that in middle ages around 1340 1347 is when uh, the bubonic plague came it killed 25 million yeah. people and then uh, it took europe almost 200 years to get back to the population before 1347 what yeah 200 years 200 years oh my the european population took over 200 years to return to the level of population before 1347 so the 14 years between 1347 to 1351 the amount of life they lost was recovered in 200 years. oh man stock market must have gone down no <laughs> 200 years that's 200 how years. long british ruled india yeah That's insane. I was reading about uh, so this vaccination thing. Mm. You must have heard of Edward Jenner, no? I was, yeah, yeah. So basically, this Edward Jenner, no, uh, he made it scientific that okay, okay, this is how it is. Usse pehle people knew that ek bar smallpox se dubara nahi hota hai, mm. and they also knew that these uh, milkmen and milkmaids they somehow don't get it. Okay. So then this guy discovered. that uh, not discovered people before him also have tried mm. this but not in a scientific way mm. so he basically discovered that uh jo cow ka order hota hai na mm. usme cow pox hota hai mm. so wo pus agar tumhari uh, body pe lag jata hai mm. then you become more resistant by this time that variolation variolation mm. whatever is going on mm. because wo log usko naak mein phook rahe sab kar rahe mm-hmm. uh but what edward jenner did was he realized that cow pox in humans is not severe at all mm. but ye jo naak mein phookna wala tum kisi ka small box se kisi naak mein phook rahe ho mm. then that might become severe so he just he gave people cow pox a very mild uh, cow pox mm. and that made them immune to small pox and that's how this whole vaccination stuff started so vaccinators mein what they do is they take the virus okay they either weaken it mm. or they kill it mm. and then just expose to your system but that whole system started with edward jano wow so you believe in vaccination no <laughs> because there is a big population in the world which is against vaccination yeah you know about pox parties no you don't know pox parties no. so uh, <laughs> there are flu parties also yeah so pox parties used to happen long ago where people used to expose their kids to measles and chicken pox because apparently it's uh, yeah. it doesn't kill children yeah. hardcore but if it happens in adults uh and uh, some anti vaccination people still do flu parties wow yeah so basically without the scientific procedure of vaccination yeah they're trying to do the same thing but yeah. not, but without they're not doing they're not killing the virus they're exposing yeah. you to the virus yeah. and hoping that it will be mild yeah but yeah, i had uh, chicken pox really Somewhere. yeah yeah it's Somewhere there it's there yeah. yeah as a kid how was it oh, i was like 4 years old but I'm very happy that it's done. Great. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's good. I I've never had chicken pox. Oh. Waiting. Waiting. <laughs> But I'm still a child inside so <laughs> <laughs> I hope it won't affect me as much. Uh, I want to talk about a fun fun story of how disease impacts history. Wow, what a fun story, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sounds uh, like fun, sounds man. Sounds like fun. How uh, disease impacts history. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a story uh, of uh, of yellow. Sorry, I'm calling Shah Rukh for this fun film. <laughs> <laughs> story of uh, yellow fever. Yeah. 
okay and this is just how one thing leads leads to another okay so uh, this is uh, we are back in end, end of 18th century okay and uh, yellow fever uh, had spread earlier in different parts of the world especially in africa okay so now we are at the end of uh, 18th century where haiti and saint dominic whatever uh, these small islands in uh, central america latin america if you guys don't know uh, were rebelling against their rulers okay so then napoleon was the ruler of france and napoleon was like uh, ye kya idhar ho raha hai let me like so he sent his armada like a lot of ships with lot of soldiers went that's to that's when napoleon talks he's just like kya ho raha hai idhar kya ho raha hai the croissant omelet chalo main chhota hu to mere ko tum log kuch bhi karoge so napoleon sends his uh, his his troops to haiti okay and uh, like a, a lot of them like i think 50000 or whatever french soldiers went there and then when they reached there and this is one of the like greatest uh, story of napoleon's life where his b- biggest enemy was not an individual but a disease okay and so his army reaches there and then uh, yellow fever basically reaches there and then most of the slaves uh, were of african origin or were from africa so they had immunity against yellow fever so they weren't affected but all these european soldiers yeah. were affected yeah and they started dying yeah yeah, yeah. and that is why uh, the slave rebellion succeeded yeah so yellow fever contributed to the success of haitian rebellion against the french army and an uh, example of how one thing leads to another is how that is when uh, napoleon's whole ambition of uh, french expansion in the new world uh, ended because he was like mai udhar karega expand but then this huge loss to his army and everything was was put a break to his his expansion plans and that is when the yellow fever stopped napoleon yeah that is when otherwise he would be speaking french yeah yeah maybe le varun <laughs> you want the croissant <laughs> i think that's how the french uh, speak yeah ah sorry so that is uh, in 1803 then uh, louisiana the state then was owned by french and then hit uh, so you not hit left <laughs> napoleon napoleon was like meko ye bechna hai yaar idhar rehna hi nahi hai so he sold it to uh, the us i think thomas jefferson was the president then and jefferson bought louisiana for whatever 5 million or whatever the price was just there. whatever whatever 5 million yeah. and then uh, Lu- the size of us actually doubled because louisiana was huge and us then was whatever so it doubled and then uh, france left that part of the world Haiti became uh, independent and Haiti actually became the first independent nation of Latin America. Wow. So because of this yellow fever, you see US expanding to double of its size, uh, Napoleon ending his territorial ambition in New World, Haiti becoming independent. It's beautiful. That's crazy. I was reading this book called Guns, Germs and Steel. Mm. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so it's basically like, uh, stuff like this. Mm. He says that uh, European people had immunity to certain diseases, but yeah. when they kept going inside Africa, yeah. they would encounter malaria, typhoid, all this, which, which uh, Africans have now natural immunity for mm-hmm. by our century mm. or like late uh, after 1600 types mm. or maybe always. Mm. Uh, and uh, then European people would have no uh, uh, immunity to that. Mm. So they would just keep dying. It was also true when East India Company came to India. Mm-hmm. A lot of them would die in tropical diseases. Yeah. A lot of them, like there's a graveyard in uh, Calcutta mm. of uh, East India people, mm. East India Company mm. people uh, dying of disease. So that's one of his hypotheses that uh, guns, germs and steel control empires. How they can, how they spread and how they... Let's say if you see uh, north of Africa was taken over by Europeans. South Africa was also taken over by Europeans. But they had a big trouble controlling the central part. They could never enter. So polio, um, they started developing the vaccine. After this, Edward Jenner said vaccines can be created. All scientists were like, Ooh, let's create some vaccines, man. <laughs> And uh, then le- like, we don't celebrate them like we celebrate Albert Einstein, but these people have had such huge impacts. Yeah. So uh, there were two uh, American scientists. There are a lot, a lot of them, but two who majorly succeeded. Before that, people tried, but then what would happen is they would uh, vaccinate 7,000 people and then one or two would get the disease, polio, from the vaccine. Mm. 
okay mm-hmm. so uh, uh what these two guys did was there was one guy named Salk and the guy named Sabin i don't know if that's how it's pronounced mm-hmm. s a l k and s a b i n so what salk did was he said and he was uh, tabhi uh, this influenza flu virus pe he was mm-hmm. doing some experiments he found that usko maar dete virus ko proper mm-hmm. aur maar ke tumko denge mm-hmm. then tumhari immunity badhta hai mm-hmm. But the other school of thought was, no, you have to give live virus. Mm. Okay, the same immunity will increase. So Sabin was on that route. Mm. He will give live virus. Mm. Now, uh, what Saul did was, he, uh, he created his vaccine and he started injecting people. Mm. Okay. And then uh, it started working. So, uh, uh, the US appro- uh, like approved that you have to do it. So they kept doing it. And Sabin came. He said, I'll give it orally. So mm. it's, easier to give but mm. i have live virus live matlab bahut hi weakened mm-hmm. strain of uh, virus mm-hmm. uh, and polio ke teen strain hai teenon mix karke dete the that's what that's what i've read mm. then seven ko us mein bola ki abhi to solve ka chal raha hai mm. tumko nahi milega mm. so you know what he did he went to the uh, ussr mm. okay okay and uh, he started doing trials there so it worked they said oh, <laughs> come 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 yeah. and then they started doing the oral vaccine in uh, the us also uh, yeah. okay But the thing is, both of these people, Salk and Sabin, they did not patent their uh, polio no. vaccines. Like when uh, Salk said, uh, why didn't you patent? He said, you can't patent the sun. Mm-hmm. Because his belief is that this is owned by the universe. Wow. Right? And then Sabin also didn't patent. And the craziest thing is, none of them won the Nobel Prize also. Wow. Both of them did not win. I mean, what other... Yeah. Yeah, what was corn 1950s me corn ukhad raha tha ki ye log ko nahi diya tumne kuch bhi. I was reading about uh, tuberculosis, okay? Yeah. TB. And when first TB came in Europe, uh people thought that this disease TB uh makes people look beautiful. That was the first thing. what because people start looking pale and everyone was like yeah this is great people look good wow so they thoda thought, khaas hai ga lekin kya sundar yeah, lag raha hai wow wow made people look beautiful in fact there's a painting i don't remember the painting's name it has one women very anorexic looking women and who is who has a paste of rice or something and she's doing it on her face which basically shows she wants to look more pale because it's more beautiful in fact i was reading about how a lot of these artists used to paint uh women who look beautiful who were actually tb patients oh my God. and they were marrying uh, many of these models okay and they were actually marrying tb patients thinking i'm marrying beautiful women so that went on for a long time in fact i was reading a quote of someone who once said uh, uh, victor hugo something and uh, Uh, they were like Victor Hugo or whatever. You have written a lot of things in your life. You have written great books. You are a great guy and everything. But the only thing that you lack is uh, tuberculosis. Something like that. <laughs> that aspirational at some point. <laughs> and you were like, Hi, yaar, wo to nahi mila mujhe, yaar. Wo to thoda fight ho gaya. Sir, a Nobel Prize or a tuberculosis was... Fit to up. It was only in the... Uh, towards the end of 20th century. When like the entire germ theory came out. and then people realized oh tb is le hota hai kya oh tb aise hota hai and that is when like tb slowly started not graduating but like down <laughs> grading from this beautiful disease to this ugly disease which happens yeah. to like because of germs and all it was very like how brand positioning of a disease <laughs> changed over decades hurry so, diye <laughs> tb sundarta ke liye <laughs> next yeah. my next uh, fact is about uh, a, a pandemic which a, l- a lot of experts consider the worst epidemic of human history which is the spanish flu from 1918 19 so like 100 years back yeah okay uh, spanish flu t- to give you a perspective affected 500 million people around the world so one third of world's population was affected because of spanish flu 50 million people died which is like 5% of world population 5% of world population died because in 1918 in 1918 19 but my favorite thing and so i'll say fun fact and you'll be like 5% of world has died 
Fun fact is that Spanish flu is actually a misnomer. Okay, Spanish flu is not something that came from Spain. And again, this is why I love history. <laughs> and this is why we love history. It's because what happened was, this is 1918-19, right? So this is the time of First World War. Now, Spain was a neutral, neutral party in that war. So what was happening is, so imagine Europe, every country is fighting. But there is a pandemic going on. People are dying in every country. But Spain is the only country not involved in the war. So their media and their newspapers have no censor as such. So they are printing about the disease. Oh my God. You know, God. people are dying, people are dying, people are dying. Every other country is hiding it. Because like Germany, France, England, everyone is like Italy. Uh, if we show that people are dying in my country, it will help the opposition. Or like no one should know that people are dying in my country. So the world over, people are thinking that, oh, this thing is happening only in Spain. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> so because of them being neutral and their news media or whatever print media of that time being completely without censor, till date that epi that pandemic is referred to as Spanish flu. While it was nothing like Spanish about it, originated maybe in Africa or somewhere. But because of this, I love it. Yeah. I love this fact. That is insane. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, probably the big, the first instance of uh, of a disease that changed the world. And I'm taking you back to 540 to 750 AD. Let's go. Okay. Uh, because till, they, uh, till now we've talked about... Uh, the oldest thing we talked about was Black Death, like uh, bubonic plague, which is around 13th, 14th century. This is the this is called the Plague of Justinian. Okay, this happened uh, during the reign of uh, Justinian the First in Byzantine. How do we pronounce it? Byzantine. Ah, Byzantine. I Byzantine. Think. Yeah, I think. Or Byzantine. It's Byzantine. It's Byzantine. Okay, whatever. I mean, the Romans pronounced it uh, Byzantine. I don't know. <laughs> they died. <laughs> Uh, so Byzantine, which is if you don't know, basically Eastern Roman, yeah. like okay, like so, Turkey, Anatolia, yeah, yeah. that area. So we're talking, we're talking about sixth century now. Thirty to fifty million people died in in this plague, which is which was half of world's population. Okay, so now that is the like half the, of world population. Yeah, half of world's population. world population. Yeah, half of world's population died. Thirty to fifty million. Your body, okay. I mean, <laughs> which is equal into if yeah. it happened, then one of us will stay alive. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. This is Thanos' dream was being fulfilled back in back in the day. Okay. But now here comes what I've said. I think too many times now. <laughs> Effect of plague in history, and because of this, uh, trade largely ceased in the world. Okay. The empire weakened, of course, and a lot of these smaller kingdoms, like from North Africa and like Middle East and like Turkey, like you said. They all reconquered their their kingdoms, which was which was then a part of a larger Roman Empire. Okay, this was also the time where uh, Justinian the first was trying to unite the eastern and western uh, part of his Roman Empire, and at at that point this plague came, so he, he could never unite it. So three big results that happened was uh, half of the world died, of course. Second was this Roman Empire never united after that. This is probably the end of the Great Roman yeah, Empire yeah, yeah. as we knew it. And the Dark Ages began. So imagine a disease changing the course of history. Oh, I think man. this is one of the earliest examples of that. The plague of Justinian. Just for uh, just for the sake of understanding, mm. what is Dark Ages? Dark Ages is essentially a, a part in human history which is uh, associated with ignorance uh, in the sense that science, culture, uh, every everything that we associate with a developed society were at its bottom. But this happened after like we went up in civilization. We went up in civilization. Then a few centuries of so-called dark ages came when everything was had hit its rock bottom. Approx from when to when? Approx from uh, 7th to 14th. Yeah. If I had to give a long thing. But some people consider that it ended when Renaissance and like... Uh, uh, reformation and all that started happening after industrial yeah, revolution. So th uh, just before, before just before, just before industrial. So this age is usually associated with like, um, you know, religious pogroms, bigotry, uh, general ignorance, war. Yo, sounds like of... today, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
and of course when we are talking about pandemic we also have to talk a bit about hiv and aids which i think is the most popular for lack of a better word and it's very recent yeah. it does not exist yeah yeah i was reading how it was detected only in early 1980s uh first detected in the american gay community but uh, a lot of research says that the virus or hiv originated in early 1920s in chimpanzees in africa and it has killed almost 25 million people so far it's huge uh so they're trying to build hiv vaccines mm. you know how they try it out like how the clinical trials happen because ad like influenza ka agar karna hoga they'll say we'll give you the vaccine they'll mm-hmm. give you influenza mm-hmm. if it happens then the vaccine didn't work mm-hmm. but you can't do that with hiv right nobody mm-hmm. going to risk their own lives to get hiv mm-hmm. so any guesses how they do the clinical trials no tell so they go to communities that has high level of infection mm-hmm. they follow some young people and uh, they basically ask them to uh, uh, some half of them they give placebos mm. they don't give the actual vaccine yeah, yeah. they half the other they give the vaccine mm. and they tell them you have to act like all of you got the placebo and they don't know what they got mm. either the placebo or the mm. uh, or or the vaccine mm. and then like years later they go back and check whether uh, like how many of this group versus how many of that group developed the hiv because that is rampant in that community and uh, recently one trial results came out and uh, they found that equal number of people from the placebo group and this group got hiv that's how the clinical trials the only last uh, fun fact <laughs> i want to talk about to was about a guy called john snow okay the guy called john snow does he know anything <laughs> yeah he's, this this john snow for sure knew a lot of things what did he do because this john snow in 1854 he was in london and he identified a particular water pump that was causing a cholera outbreak in london yeah, and he yeah. because of his identification of the water pump it he prevented spreading of the disease and saved like thousands of lives this john snow. i've read this book but i didn't that time game of thrones was not there ah. it's called uh, i'll i'll put the l- link for the book in the description yeah, yeah. but yeah this guy was very brave yeah is he jab pura outbreak hua nobody yeah. understood how it happened because yeah. they used to all go crazy like yeah. you know yeah. bhagwan gussa ho gaya types yeah and he went and he found out they're spreading through water blah 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 yeah. blah a lot of things now i would like to uh, say some things that are not uh, mm. from the past but uh, yeah. probably for the future one of the things i was reading is if you time travel okay if you go to the past uh, you might you are you might be carrying bacteria that they have no resistance to mm. it'll kill all of them um mm. uh, 30% of them mm. 50% of them mm. if you go to the future there might be bacteria that you have no immunity mm. to and or virus mm. and it'll kill you dude imagine if somebody is time traveling from some time ki plague se bhag raha hai you act nere nere and comes and here coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> oh i like what the fuck bro so oh, yeah. man it's very interesting and another thing is uh this is uh, again my uneducated opinion um, but basically antibacterials when you take them antibiotics that's what they call i've been saying oh. antibacterials antibiotics like <laughs> everyone i'm an antibiotic technologies there's okay. always one guy in a party who will always like nahi nahi main nahi pee sakta main antibiotic pe yeah, yeah so me. basically uh, antibiotics if you take you should always finish the course yeah. okay very because good. otherwise the bacteria you know it becomes what doesn't kill you makes you stronger it mm. becomes stronger and stronger and stronger strains of bacteria are now exist in the world and they are doing do this there's so much shit these people know they feed chicken the strongest antibiotic available in the world the chicken doesn't get infected so in chicken farms now one day there'll be the strongest bacteria of the world yeah you should not use misuse antibiotics like this and then one so how does an antibiotic matlab in theory or mota moti how does it work doesn't mm-hmm. kill your cell kills the bacteria mm-hmm. one day anything that the, if the bacteria is as strong as you or it doesn't have vulnerabilities then yeah. no antibiotic will work you can't take any antibiotic and that will be a much deadlier outbreak 
than this. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good, <laughs> good note too. But, uh, but yeah, this is a good PSA. Yeah. Like always, always finish always the finish. course of uh, any antibiotic. Yeah. Don't feel, I, I've seen a lot of people go like, up to medic ho gaya so big ki. Yeah. But the doctor always says ki four days ka ko, four into yeah. two and like six into two. I think we have to go. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters and, uh, <laughs> and fellow Coronas. No, I, last one thing. Last one thing I want to say yeah. is, um, uh, coronavirus is called coronavirus, you know why? Nobody you tell. So, coronavirus is like RNA like this, it is RNA. And then it has proteins coming yeah. out like this. Yeah. That looks like a crown. Yeah. And that's why the in Latin crown is called Corona. Mm. And uh, as you know, we are in 20th century, so we speak Latin. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. 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 So that's why it's called Coronavirus. Yeah. All right. The podcast also has Latin subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll Sanskrit put... <laughs> subtitles if you want. Two languages that we yeah. most commonly speak. Proto-Indo-European <laughs> <Yeah>. languages. Indo-Germanic. <laughs> Germ. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Uh, thank you yeah. so much for listening to this uh, yeah. or watching or this. Watching, watching. This will be available on all uh, all main streaming platforms. This is our first episode, um, and uh, we're planning to do a lot more episodes of this. Yeah. Uh, don't take anything we said at face value. Please do your own research also. Oh, yeah. We're we're comedians, yeah. and we just we're making content, yeah. not uh, scientific papers. Yeah, yeah. But any closing remarks for our? Yeah, audience? yeah. Just going to add to that. Like we are not. Claiming to be experts in yeah. this, we haven't even studied it. Yeah, uh, it's just that something that we are very curious and passionate about. Yeah, and we want to share it with you guys so that you guys can read more and like discuss more. Yeah, basically spread knowledge. Yeah, spread knowledge. Yeah, and stop spreading virus. Uh, two past two curious signing out. <laughs> For now, will be available in the future.